among some of the older wrestlers that are there, do you feel like this is a problem that's not being addressed? Or do you feel like that people are being diagnosed with this? Or is this being talked about? I don't about think people all? are being diagnosed with it because I don't think it's an issue that is widely known still. I think it might change in the near future. And obviously, as a lay person who, without a medical degree, diagnosing people at sight is, you know, ridiculous in the extreme. But from what I've read and seen of football players, older football players and the signs and symptoms and some of the behavioral traits of people who were subsequently found to have CTE when, when autopsies were performed, you can see a lot of the similar things in some of the older wrestlers, retired like the Oyakata and stuff like that, that, that wild sudden mood swings or the complete um, loss of like train of thought or i mean obviously there are age-related things that happen to everyone and you, there could be a, a million different reasons for stuff but um knowing what i know about football and rugby and how it's affected people in the past i i feel like i see similar stuff in sumo but i mean you know what does at that stage you know <laughs> there's nothing you can do so mm -hmm. um well, you know, thank you for speaking to it though i mean mm -hmm. It's, it's good to talk to you about that because on the outside, we, we do wonder what goes on in the inside and you have a pulse of what goes on and we care about the wrestlers and we, we, we do care and we want to see them taken care of because we're their fans, whether they're yeah. retired or not. So thank you for speaking to that. Um, no I want to shift gears. Oh, is that cool? Oh, that's cool. I was, uh, well, if I may, you've alluded a couple times, uh, we've alluded several times to all the different media that you have yeah. your fingers in. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I mean, people who listen to us are gonna mm -hmm. know you from NHK. Okay. Um, so I've, I thought this might be a really good time for you to talk about all the different things you do from uh, Inside, Inside Sports, Sports Japan. Japan. Um, like maybe you could give an overview of, uh, uh, just, just what you do in sports media. Because you, you do a lot. A lot. Well, am I allowed to plug my OnlyFans account where I dress up yes. as different anime Abs characters? Yeah, oh. you could do whatever you like. I think I'll keep that for a future episode. <laughs> um. But only <laughs> if you show us a costume. <laughs> it's marked N S W. Um, so, yeah, I'm an NHK uh an nhk world obviously nhk world which is you know people like bbc world if you're familiar with that um it's the global arm of nhk which is the national broadcaster in japan uh nhk being analogous to abc maybe in the states or nbc or one, one of those like legacy broadcasters japan is one of the countries like the uk and like ireland that has a license fee so for people who are not familiar with that if you own a television set or you own a device that can pick up tv signals you have to pay a license same as you have to pay for a car or gun or whatever else so tvs in certain countries require licenses and that license fee which is essentially a kind of tax it's paid yearly that goes to the national broadcaster so the national broadcaster in most countries is partly owned by the government but it's not a government um government mouthpiece will say or a government propaganda machine it's essentially there to ensure that people can get fair and accurate information free from private companies and their various agendas so obviously japan has tons of private media companies private tv stations and all the rest but nhk operates under certain rules so there's no advertising on nhk it's the same for the bbc so uh, that's why <clears throat> yeah that's yeah. That, there are no ads you'll never see any commercials or ads on nhk that's why you don't see people on tv shows wearing obvious logos like if i was to go on a tv show i couldn't be wearing something with an adidas logo for example because that would be seen it's also why during sumo tournaments when they're doing the kensho when they're yobidashi are walking around holding thing the camera zooms out and shows a wide shot they mute the, or not mute, they lower the sound in the arena and they usually talk over it. So you can't hear them saying the names of the sponsor companies. So NHK particularly is very, very vigilant about anything that could be a, a, appeared to like be promoting a product or a company. So PBS, 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 here. PBS, okay. PBS would be a similar kind of thing, like a, maybe a bigger, like a cross between PBS and, and one of the main broadcasters would say something like that. So it's the same as maybe the BBC, but yeah, NHK obviously would take a more conservative, not conservative politically, but more conservative um, 
in terms of content. Like, you know, you won't get a lot of controversial issues brought up, you know, or stuff like that. It's just, it, it's, it's a company that's remit is to provide information for everyone. So they, you know, they have to, they have to try to be as neutral and fair as possible and everything. So it's kind of like, it might come across as tame, but yeah, I mean, that's basically the remit. So I work, I don't work, I'm not an employee of NHK. I do the live broadcasts. I'm a color commentator on that. So, uh, but we haven't done that since last March, obviously because of Corona, they can't have lots of people in the booths because the booths, TV booths are sealed environments, obviously soundproof. So, um, you know, the air is, <laughs> you're in a small booth with a couple of other people and the air is, the, it's like being, you know, trapped on a small airplane or something like that. So it's, it's just too risky. So um, NHK World then, which is the global arm of NHK, we do the Grand Sumo preview, Grand Sumo review sometimes. So that goes out to, I think it's like 168 countries or something like that. Wow. And depending on your local provider or cable or satellite or internet or wherever, you can pick up that show. So I'm one of the presenters on that. Uh, I'll be back for that in July. I was off in March and May. And Japan Times, I guess that's USA Today, maybe version, you know. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Is it? There's, I don't know if there's a or New York Times, you know, or something like that. It's a so big publication. Yeah, Japan Times <laughs> is big. Yeah, I used to work. I used to write columns for the Daily Yomiuri for the English version of the Yomiuri Shimbun, and that's the world's biggest newspaper by circulation. That has fourteen million copies a day. I think wow. you, know, you know, physical copies. Japan Times doesn't have a Japanese version, but I mean, it's it's yeah. In terms of English language content, it's pretty big for Japan. Inside Sport Japan is my own media company that I set up about four years ago, but we, it's a small media company. I basically set that up to cover uh, sports that don't get a lot of exposure, women's sports, para sports, stuff like that. Things that are great stories, things like that. We covered a lot of uh, gridiron, American football, rugby, uh, various other bits and pieces as well. Mostly nowadays, it's just football, rugby, and sumo and stuff like that, but uh, you know, how that will evolve and change over the years has uh, to come remains to be seen. And then <clears throat> I do a lot of other stuff as well in various. Uh, the the band, capacities. you're talking about the band, libido? <laughs> Not the band, no, the, but the musical <laughs> career is long dead, you know. What about photography? Are you talking about photography? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I do. I'm a professional sports photographer as well. So I'm on the sidelines, like for the Rugby World Cup or, you know, this um, is how you I'm only hoping... get two hours of sleep. You do all of the rest of this in the other yeah. 22 hours. That's amazing. I'm actually hopeful with everything, you know, opening up and changing over there. So I'm hoping to be over for some NFL games shooting those um, this oh, season. Because now the Bears have finally got a quarterback and Aaron Rodgers is leaving. So it'll be great to see all that stuff. <laughs> I was going to invite you to Texas so you could experience some Friday night lights here. Well, we, the Japan national team played in Texas against the spring league football last March. So I was hoping to go to that, but it was just like just after Corona started or just before Corona started and I was involved. So I said, I hired some local photographers in Texas and we shot that game. Uh, Japan is, this is something most people don't realize. Japan is the number three country in the world for American football by far. Japan and the U S are the only countries that have ever won the world cup in American football. Japan won the first two and America has won the last three. And no other country has ever won. Japan is J American football started in Japan in 1934. And since then, Japan has never lost a single game at national or club level to any other country in the world outside of the US. Really? That's yeah. So, um, yeah, because like we, you know, we got all these like Division One FBS players like playing in Japan. It's a really minor sport in terms of popularity. I think it's like number 47. But in terms of level, you have the NFL, the CFL, and then the X League in Japan. The X League is not a fully pro league. It's a semi-pro league, but um, it's by far the number, like Japan dominates every other country in the world in terms of football, apart from the US. So, you know, it's, it's one of those weird things, you know. Do they yeah, source no uh, players from the US? Each X League team is allowed four Americans or four import players. So, I mean, they're almost always American. And... I think last year I was looking, there's 55 Americans playing in Japan. Half of them have spent at least some time with an NFL team in camp or um, on practice 
rosters or in preseason games. And about 70% of them played for an FBS program, like the big ones, you know, like Texas or uh, Texas is not really a big FBS program, I guess. But, um, like, uh, I have no idea. Alabama, you could have said anything. Or, we don't even yeah, know what FBS uh, okay. is. Yeah, what is FBS? Yeah. We're like, yeah, FBS, absolutely. FBS is, is the Football Bowl subdivision. It's the top division of college football in the US. So when you hear oh. teams like Alabama and UCLA and Clemson, Ohio State, they're all F- FBS teams. I thought that was oh. the Big Ten. So the Big Ten, so <laughs> the Big Ten is a division inside the FBS. The oh. FBS is the national. Oh. So I have so we- a tiny understanding. Tiniest, yeah. tiniest understanding. You're not really. You couldn't be Texans, really, though, are you? Because I mean, yeah, I we're thought. Just faking yeah. it. We... You know what? You're Texans who don't understand anything about football. I'm an Irish man who doesn't even <laughs> drink, so I don't, don't drink, drink alcohol. Yeah, so I. That's why they took away my passport. I stopped drinking Guinness. <laughs> They're never going to let you back in. <laughs> no, that was that was the final straw. I mean, all the other stuff I did, you know, they let it slide. But once I stopped drinking alcohol, they were just like, no, fuck this, you're out. You're out. <laughs> you're out. Well, the truth is, to be honest, our dad watches sports 24-7. Yeah. Um, we we are Texans and we did grow up with football. So and cheerleading, all of that, like we don't follow it. But if you set us down, we have a complete understanding of a you game. You fake it. You could fake it. We could fake yeah. it, but we actually yeah. do know what you know first downs are, and we 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 Honestly, can follow the game. Well, at least I, know, I can. I know the basics, but I stopped following football uh, actually when Roger Staubach retired. Oh wow! You were a, you were a child. Time. Yeah, I was a child. Well, That's see, my I'm high saying. school one like got almost a state. We were like five A in state. There was no way to avoid it, but maybe it was because my high school had a better team than your. I'm sure. Did. I'm sure. It's like me, you know. I'm not really a sumo commentator. I just play one on TV and then you know, gonna like <laughs> well you're pretending very very well yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah. so um, wait, wait wait can wait at what point did you add photography to your arsenal oh I've had a camera in my hand since I was six years old so um oh. but as a professional sports photographer uh like doing that like at a high level like yeah. you know international tournaments uh that's probably just like the last 10 12 years 15 years something like that okay um, but I mean I was always I was always involved in photography and taking pictures and um all the way since I was a kid I, my, I had my first camera at six so um yeah but as like doing proper world-class sports photography probably about 10 12 years I guess I'm getting a whole new idea of John Gunn. I know. That's now, what I tell now you. Now you're like this artistic, music loving. Yeah. Art, and I, he'll make you long hair yes, flowing long hair. in the wind. He was a goth. He can totally make you totally dry goth. Yeah. He can make you a mixtape too, which I can. He, which I forgot to do, didn't I? You did. And that's why I reminded you. Um, before we, I know we're, we're, we've gone over this time for you, but can we do some silly rapid fire questions? Um, sure. Okay. 